coming up on Push to Talk. We finally get to see what Death Stranding is all about. Our impressions. Microsoft doubles down on E3 and announces a bunch of new games. Larian Studios, the team behind Divinity Original Sin 2, is teasing the third entry in a mysterious new game. And finally, we learn that Activision will be rebooting Call of Duty Modern Warfare this October. All this and more on today's show. This is Push to Talk, episode 26, recorded Sunday, June 2nd, 2019. This episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash push to talk and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Then just download a title for free and start listening. Welcome back, everybody. I am your host, Jan, alongside our usual co-hosts, Joe, and I was going to say Bill, but Bill is actually in the process of fighting a vicious man flu that has sidelined him for the better part of a week. He sounds like he's dying. I think his spirits are still intact because he got really grumpy about some Destiny stuff the other day. (laughs) So he's still mentally there, but he does sound terrible. So he decided to sit this one out. We'll hope that uh, he'll join us again next week. But in, in his stead... Laren has offered to sit in. So hello, both you, uh, Joe and Laren. How are you guys doing? Hello, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So we we should say that, um, I mean, you guys are familiar with Joe on the podcast. Laren, do you want to give us a quick background? I know you've done some YouTube stuff. You're definitely um, quite heavily involved in gaming as well. Like what's your, what's your, not resume, but uh, what do you enjoy when it comes to gaming? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so I run a YouTube channel that is just personally run by me, uh, where I cover a lot of Plants vs. Zombies, uh, but I've also delved into a bit of Darksiders. Uh, I know those are two completely different games, but (laughs) um, that's what I cover on my channel mostly, but I'm also just a freelance writer for different websites. So I dabble in a little bit of everything, so to speak, in the gaming realm anyway. That is an interesting combination, is uh, Darksiders and uh, Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> sort of the opposite ends of the spectrum, I guess. Yeah. Is yeah. Plants vs. Zombies, do they still come out with new stuff? It's been a long time since I've played it. I used to play it a lot on my, my iPad and stuff. So Garden Warfare 2 is the most recent oh. installment, and it's the third-person shooter. And they've started to, well, PopCap, the developer, has started to roll out some updates to sort of get people excited because everybody's speculating that they're going to be releasing something at E3 or some sort of new Plants vs. Zombies game because uh, they have confirmed that they're working on something. We don't know what. Uh, So it could very well be Garden Warfare 3. It could be another type of like mobile game like how Plants vs. Zombies originally was. Uh, So we'll have to see. But yeah, they're they're updating it pretty regularly, I'd say. Hmm. And you know what? And just when you said Darkseid or something went off in my my head and I remember seeing this and I guess there are rumors of potentially a new Darksiders game being revealed at E3 this year? Yeah, so a while back there was this leak slash rumor going around about uh, a new Darksiders game on the subreddit and then I guess uh, THQ confirmed that they will be doing um, a panel about the Darksiders series, how they come up with uh, the games and where they're going with it in the future. And I think they did say for sure that they are going to reveal some sort of Darksiders game at E3. So uh, we don't know if that's going to be the next one in the series or a prequel, uh, something like that. But people are pretty Mm. excited for that. We're going to talk a little bit more about E3 at the end of the show. Uh, This is going to be technically our last episode released before E3. However, we're going to be recording one more episode uh, that will be recording before E3. So... We'll save our predictions and stuff for the next episode, which people will then be able to listen as E3 is happening, so you can literally listen to us fail uh, in real time. Or succeed. <laughs> and we'll, we'll dis- dissect it afterwards. <laughs> but, uh, Joe, um, what have you been up to this past week? I know you've had some time away from gaming with other life priorities this past week, but did you did you manage to keep up with anything? I assume, I don't know, did you manage to squeeze in some Nintendo Switch time during all the other work that you had to do? I'll say this, Jan. I'll say this. I have I woke up this morning and I realized that I have become, in a matter of five or six days, a person that I do not recognize. Buying lawnmowers, weed whackers, uh, fixing. Uh, you're a, a homeowner now. <laughs> yeah, these are just uh, you know I've, I've mowed the lawn before, but I've never had to care about that lawn. What a different. I mean, it's such a different mindset. Um, and I 
I can't I can't tell if I'm enjoying the new me, this new and improved uh, non beta version. This is now production ready. <laughs> Joe, I, what two I, I'm I'm I, I think it's one point oh. Oh, one point oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've just been Initial a shell release, of myself. You're no longer in early access. Yeah, I was greenlit about thirty years ago, but <laughs> I finally, I think I finally uh, got out of development hell, and here I am. <laughs> I finally <laughs> sort of graduated to the real world. So no, I have not done a dang thing with uh, the Xbox or the Switch or or anything. What I did do was uh, pop on to the Switch to check out what appears to be some pre E three sales. Uh, that are going on. So you know, if you own a Switch, I would check out the shop because there's some good stuff for sale. But did I have pick up anything? anything. I did. I got the the Red Strings Club, which now, as I'm saying it, I'm realizing that actually might not be the title of it, but it's something <laughs> like that. And it's sort of like a like a narrative driven bartending simulator, if I recall the description correctly. Hmm. Um, well, l- yeah. We talked about last week, like you mentioned that you have got some plans about rigging your new house with, you know, at the very <laughs> least, Ethernet and maybe some video cables and that kind of stuff. Obviously, you haven't done any of that stuff yet, but have you, now that you're in the house, I assume you've been there for a couple of days, have you had any any additional thoughts on that? A few. Is it still in the future? Still planned? It's not deep into the future. I, uh, I'm blessed with a very, very handy father who has uh, been spending some time here and we're uh, sort of building this custom uh, entertainment center for our living room with wood. What a lovely element. And uh, <laughs> so, so we're sort of, uh, as we work on the sketches of it, we're like sort of, you know, integrating into the design of it, the, uh, the necessary space and, uh, you know, paneling that'll accommodate all sorts of different cabling. So make sure you leave lots of room for um, airflow, eh? Exactly. Yep. Because I mean, I mean, you've got an Xbox One, so you know just how loud that thing gets and hot. And I imagine that any upcoming PlayStation Five is going to be, you know, if you compare it to the PS4 when it first came out, it was a jet engine that could heat your house. Yes, absolutely. So fortunately for the game consoles, my uh, stereo receiver or my surround sound receiver is significantly larger. So that's sort of the thing driving the space need. So there'll be lots of airflow. But uh, your your point is well taken and certainly something I've taken into consideration. Awesome. All right. Um, so let's get back a little bit. So since Joe didn't have a lot of time to talk about, I want to pass it over to Laren and see if she's been playing any games in the past week or the, the most recent past, we should say, because, you know, we haven't heard from you on a weekly basis, so you've got a little <laughs> bit more leeway, but um, anything that you've been particularly interested in recently? Um, well, I I always go back to Smite for whatever reason. I just, <laughs> whenever I'm like, I need to play something, but I don't want to play anything new or I don't want to get invested into something, I just fire up Smite and, and play a few rounds. So that's usually my fallback. Uh, I haven't been playing a whole lot of stuff since then. I did hop on to Garden Warfare 2 just to unlock a few, uh, you know, sticker pack things. That's, you know, the, the free birthday thing that they had going on was this cool little promotion where you get all this, it, these in-game cosmetics, I guess. Um, so I had to make sure to log in each day to get those. Um, other than that, haven't been doing too much. A while back, uh, a couple weeks ago, I got back onto Minecraft because uh, <laughs> that's another one of those weird fallback things where once I... Once a year or so, I'll I'll play Minecraft and get really like into it, and then I'll just put it down and not play it again. So it uh, is that, totally one of those it. games that that can yeah. happen to, though, right? Like you can easily get sucked into Minecraft. Yeah, I'll I'll play for like hours. a couple weeks, right? Yeah, I'll just be like, okay, I'm building this mansion or something, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'll just be like, okay, I'm done, and then I won't play for like you know ten months or something. Yeah, yeah. I think the last time that I played Minecraft, I went through and I, I had discovered this website, and I don't ask me for the, the name of it, I don't remember, but it had blueprints, essentially, for buildings. Um, nice. And and when I play Minecraft, I basically just want to build stuff. Uh, so I think I built like half like a Viking village with like a great hall and a, a farmhouse and, and, all, and like a ship and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then after two weeks or so, it was gone again. No more mm-hmm. interest in Minecraft. It's like a flash fire that it just comes and goes. Um, yeah. Are you excited about this Minecraft? What is it called? Minecraft Earth. Earth. Um, I think the it Pokemon looks really Go interesting. type game. Yeah, yeah. I think it looks interesting. Um, you know, assuming they can uh, create it properly for everybody, so that it's not having a bunch of glitches or overheating people's phones. That's that was one of the huge issues I had with Pokemon Go. Is either I wouldn't have service for whatever reason, which I know is partially to do with my phone, but uh, or it would 
be really hard for my phone to run the game. Uh, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen with uh, Minecraft Earth. But it does look really interesting, the whole uh, uh, being able to just build randomly in your environment. Uh, uh, I think it I think it could work if they do it properly. Can we it does seem like talk if, about... If there is a game similar to Pokemon that could do that, it would be Minecraft. What's mm -hmm. up, Joe? I'm sorry. I was going to say, can, can someone explain to me what this is? Because I guess I really have been away. <laughs> <laughs> well... Laren, do you want to take a, a stab at it? Because my best explanation of it is, is it's Pokemon Go without the Pokemon and Minecraft instead. But I think there's probably a more apt <laughs> explanation for is that. Is it like AR? Yeah, uh, it's, it's like alternate reality. Is that the, is that the term? Alternate, uh, uh, augmented, augmented reality. Augmented. There we go. Thank you. AR. Yeah. AR. And uh, basically, I think you can go around and, and just build things in your environment. Like if you wanted to build a Minecraft house on your table in your living room you can do that or you can go out to a park and build things there uh i wasn't super clear on whether people can can see what you're doing or if you have to like opt into their seed you know uh, yeah i, I don't know if you have weird. to specifically share it but i do know that right. you'll be able to visit what other people have built and so that's probably it yeah yeah so of course Otherwise, one of the biggest concerns people had immediately was you know okay how many penis-like structures are going to be built all over my neighborhood. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, but then you would just be inundated with, like, weird things built everywhere. Or if you wanted to build in a certain area, it could be taken up already by somebody else. So mm -hmm. I assume it's an opt-in feature. But uh, it would be cool to be able to do that with a friend, like co-op. Uh, yeah. And you just build things around you in your house and just have all these different structures and you just hold up your phone and you can see everything you've built like i think that's pretty cool, cool. yeah but i'd be yeah, interested that's much to see it in, in in action i haven't seen a whole lot of it like just as far as like mm -hmm. what's the scale of these blocks you know like is a block the size of you know right. uh, obviously it's bigger than the lego piece or something but you know it, it it could be pretty interesting i think what what will determine the longevity or success of this game is that like with pokemon go you had this collection aspect right like people were going to specific places to catch a specific mm -hmm. pokemon because that's sort of what it was all about with minecraft it's like okay why would i go somewhere to check out what somebody's built right. um but i think they're going to have like there'll be special pieces or special blocks that you can only get from certain areas so if you want to mm. build something cool with a certain style like i don't know there's a whole uh, i'm sure there's a whole bunch of thought that's gone into yeah. that um yeah that's another thing i didn't think about was the mining aspect or the resource gathering like do you have to really go out and find things or how much can you do just sitting in your house mm -hmm. you find materials while you know in your own living area and you don't have to go anywhere yeah. um yeah it makes sense that they would want you to get out and try to explore a little bit but with pokemon go that was like to the chagrin of a lot of businesses and things where they didn't want you to just <laughs> sit there sure and try was. to catch squirtle or whatever <laughs> so. yeah 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 listen we've got a group of 20 kids here that are just sitting around in front of our store not buying anything yeah. right and if that yeah. store is like a raymore and flanagan then it's not helpful <laughs> yeah and you know with minecraft obviously it's all about the building stuff so it's going to be interesting to see like i'm sure there will be i mean there's some people that build really elaborate things in minecraft so I could right. see it being kind of cool if you would go to some, you know, I mean, people obviously visit landmarks and uh, parks and statues and stuff like that. I, I guess it's possible that in the future we would go to a place to see a, a virtual statue of something, you know, like you'd actually have to bring yeah. up your phone, hold it up and be like, oh, look, that's the thing that renowned Minecraft architect, blah, 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 built. Right. And it's really cool. Yeah. And it would it would only be for the people who are around that area. But I guess that'd be like any other landmark or, you know. Yeah. I mean, just... I'm. I'm sure we'll see them shared online and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's always the other thing is the one thing about catching Pokemon is you had to physically go there. Yeah. Even though people tried to game that too, if you remember, like there were people messing around with uh, fake GPSs trying to trick the game into them right. actually being somewhere else. And um, I mean, Jeez. people strapping their phone onto treadmills and stuff to simulate walking. <laughs> right. People get go pretty for a imaginative. Walk. So um, we'll see. Do you remember when that's coming out? It's pretty soon, isn't it? I don't remember. I'd have to double check that. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I just wanted to see. It's coming out. It's a closed beta is planned for the summer. So, it, yeah, it could be kind of interesting. Joe, did you ever get into that kind of stuff at all? Like, did you ever play Pokemon Go? Or Yeah, I did. And uh, more apt to the conversation, I played a lot of Minecraft. Actually, when it first started becoming a thing, maybe like 09 or something um early minecraft i thought it was like incredible and uh, back in the original days when it was a free game before microsoft bought it yeah and all that. yeah 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 and uh yeah it really did it really did at the time sort of like just change your change your thinking about what video games were it, it was kind of on the cusp of that like 
community driven uh era that i think we're definitely obviously in now um just because it was it was all about like what can you do and uh Hmm. you know show me what you can do basically so yeah cool stuff and i think it really sort of jump-started people's youtube presence a lot more Mm -hmm. alongside call of duty and things like that but like minecraft really took over the youtube airwaves for a while um just because it allowed people to be so creative and at the time youtube was really conducive to that so um, it's very true because uh, I mean a lot of games. Yes, there's a lot of let's play content and and very skilled esports content on YouTube. But as far as creativity, I think Minecraft's got to be mm-hmm. uh, the one that all that started it all, but probably the king of it still. I can't really think of too many other games. What's always surprised me is that Lego never really managed to break into that space because I mean they're obviously the original creative block building uh, game, if you will. Um, and while they're no doubt still popular, like I have a cabinet behind me full of Legos, and I wish I had more money to buy more Legos and more space to put more Legos. But um, I feel like, yeah, virtual Lego games never really quite found the success that Minecraft had, which was surprising mm-hmm. to me. Minecraft is just so mechanically well done that I think that was part of the. It's not a problem, but I think that's why Lego never really took off because it just didn't have the systems that mm-hmm. Minecraft does. It's just so, you know, intuitive. And once you get the hang of it, you can just go and go and go. Um, and I don't know that the Lego games really have that quality. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right. Well, I talked last week about getting my Oculus Rift set up with an expansion extension cable and um, predicted that I would still be looking for that cable by the time the Valve Index becomes available in Canada. And that may still be true because I've already abandoned that endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did it the afternoon after we recorded the the podcast, Joe. Um, I decided, screw this. It's just not going to work. Uh, you so I've quickly. got my Oculus Rift S sitting here in this room. I, I literally moved some furniture instead. Um, that was easier in the end than trying to find a 15 plus foot display port extension cable that would not result in problems. And cheaper. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. Um I haven't had as much time to play with the Rift yet as I wanted to, so I'll reserve my mini review for a future episode. But I did spend a stupid amount of Destiny 2 Gambit time in the past week, and I have a good excuse. Well, not good, but I have a excuse, an excuse. Um, Gambit is one of those game modes, they call it uh, part PvE, part PvP, where you basically... uh, fight against AI enemies first, and then there are moments where you can invade the other team and, and go PvP against them. Um, anyways, like my group uh, that includes Bill and Dusty, uh, we kind of enjoy it. We don't hate it as much as regular Destiny 2 PvP, but we got way too much Gambit exposure this past week. The reason we did it is because the Infamy, which is the ranking system for it, had, they had triple Infamy. It's the last week of their season. Season 8 of Destiny 2 begins next week. Actually, today, if you're listening to the podcast on Tuesday as it's been released. Um, so we were trying to get some stuff done last minute. We, we, we thought this would be the time to do it. Uh, I think we all got it done and Bill decided to want to do it three times, which seemed insane at the moment. Um, still does. So it's one of those things. I don't know why we do this to ourselves a lot. I keep telling myself I should just play games for the fun of it and not play things I don't want to do. And then there's this little thing in Destiny 2 that happens. It's like... But if you just do it a little bit this week, like 20 plus hours only, just a small amount, like a third of your life this week, you'll get something shiny that you'll forget about next week. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We're oh. just all suckers for that wow. that game. Um, <laughs> it's a little sad, but you know, I think we've had our fill of Gambit for now. I really got to stop doing that. Next week, there'll be new content in Destiny 2, so I'm sure Bill and I will talk about that. And I'm hoping somewhere to still squeeze in some VR time. The one game that I did try out, um, have you, either of you guys ever done any VR gaming? No. Uh, no. So there's a game, if you ever get the chance, like if you ever get gifted a, a VR headset or you end up with one somehow, there's a game called Lone Echo, which is probably, in my opinion, probably the best VR game available. It's a story-driven narrative type game, so it's not one of those shooters. Beat Saber is probably the one that people talk about all the time that I'm sure you've heard of. And Beat Saber is great in its own right. But Lone Echo solves, in my opinion, one of the biggest challenges with VR, and that's general like movement. Um, like right. There's games that will teleport you from one point to another, because a lot of people tend to get motion sick if you actually are physically standing still, but use a joystick to move. Right. You know, like It really messes with your brain. So Lone Echo solves that by putting you into space. You're basically on a space station. You're an android, like a maintenance-type robot, and you free float through no gravity, 
and you grab onto objects and pull yourself, right? So you use your own momentum to push around. Mm. And that works amazingly well when you're standing still. And I'm sure I look like a complete fool, but you kind of have to put that aside when you're doing anything in a VR headset. Because <laughs> um, you're grabbing onto things and you're pulling yourself around and you're letting the motion, the momentum, and the lack of gravity carry you through space. And what I found hilarious is that when you're having conversations with NPCs in the game, I tended, you know, I was kept floating away from them. So I would literally grab their face and hold onto their face as they're talking to me. Um, and it's an amazing experience because they've actually coded in the AI of these other NPCs that if you do that too much, they'll actually like swat you away as if you're a fly, which makes sense because if you're having a conversation with somebody that keeps holding onto your shoulder or your face, that's probably slightly annoying. But it's a wonderful experience and I want to do more of that. It's not a very long game. Most VR titles aren't super long, but it's a, it's a really cool experience. So if you ever cool. get the chance and you haven't tried out Lone Echo on VR... You should um, put that on your list. Very cool. Duly noted. Now, we said E3 is just a week and a bit away. Um, but surprisingly, I feel like there was a lot of news this past week. I feel like E3 has become this center point where news is released around. It's no longer just happening in the three days at E3. It seems to have grown into this. Like, it's leaked out you know, like there's news a couple of weeks before and some stuff afterwards, and not just at conferences, but just in general. And it should be that like, way. It's it's easier yeah, to so. digest everything instead of like I'm, a couple of years ago when E3 was happening. I was like, what what did I miss? And when it's like this, the way it is now, you know, you have this week before where it's like that was Death Stranding Day, and then the next day will be you know New Dark Siders Day or something. We don't know yet, but kind of let stuff breathe a little bit. Mm. Sorry, I'm having an ice cold smoothie because. <laughs> I can't have the air conditioning on when I'm doing the podcast and it's hot. <laughs> nice. So, but yeah, so get a brain freeze. that's my goal. I try to get a brain freeze that lasts for 10 minutes and then I, I can talk for 10 <laughs> minutes. And <clears throat> So you mentioned Death Stranding and there literally was basically a Death Stranding day. Mm -hmm. I think it was on May 29th where um, they released a new trailer, which was eight minutes long, which was quite impressive. Yeah. It was quite a long trailer. It was. Um, you guys watched it. What did you think? Go ahead, Larry. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about it. Uh, it looks like it could be interesting, but they really didn't show a whole lot of uh, engaging gameplay, in my opinion. I feel like there was a lot of walking, there's a lot of mysterious intrigue story stuff going on, and then that was about it. Yeah. Uh, and lots of Mads Mikkelsen, which is fine, because I like him as an actor. Uh, but yeah, it could be fun. We'll see. I'd like to see more. I appreciate your lack of hype, because it's uh, just very clearly a, <laughs> your... Uh, genuine take on it and uh it's uh uncommon i'd say in dealing with the uh, kojima basically. yeah i'm not a i wasn't ever really a huge kojima fan not that i'm like against anything he does it's just uh you know i'm not on the same hype train as a lot of other people so i don't know if that's letting me see the trailer in a different light but yeah that's just my thoughts on it sure just as a side note joe are you a big kojima fan i know we talked about this before but i don't remember no you know i'm not but I, so I feel but I like, get it. I feel like I always, and this is totally anecdotal and probably completely wrong, but I feel like there's always this hype train and there are all these people that love everything Kojima touches. I have yet to meet one. Yeah, same here, <laughs> of man. Of these people. It's because right. it's, it's just like the top journalists <laughs> that love him. It's, that's what it seems to be. <laughs> the people that have the biggest platform seem to love him the most. And, and, and I truly do say that with no malice. Like, go no, Kojima. And, yeah. This this project looks really intriguing. It's definitely different. It is, and that's what I was mainly going to say is that uh, I'm into it just because, like, what the heck is this thing? So that's like kind of enough for me to be like, yeah, I'll get that day one. Sure, I got nothing else going on this this November. So so that's totally not true, but uh, <laughs> I, I still want to play. <laughs> There's not many games coming out this fall. <laughs> yeah. No, never. Yeah. So maybe we should talk a little bit about what we saw in the trailer. So. Um, you know, it was sort of kind of gameplay. It was obviously PlayStation 4 Pro 4K footage. Mm -hmm. um, it looked good. I mean, you mentioned Mads Mikkelsen, and there are obviously some other um, actors, Norman Reedus, and a couple of uh, other fairly well-known actors. Um, so clearly all the characters look great. They look like real representations of the actors playing them. And I find that phenomenon to be quite interesting, is how, how often we now see actual actors in video games. Um, and, yeah. and with their same likeness. So not just lending their voice to it, but their entire, you know, face and facial features and, and reactions and stuff like that, which is kind of interesting to me. But yeah, cool. I called it like an extreme UPS simulator because it does seem like 
the main character that you're playing as, which is Sam Porter Bridges, who's played by Norman Reedus, seems to be doing a lot of deliveries of things with a yeah. lot of ladders. Yeah, which is cool. It's a cool mechanic they showed. I did, I did enjoy the ladder. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, is it enough to sustain you for a, <laughs> a full however many hour game? <laughs> it was a really run, run cool away from bad ladder. guys and ladder up some hills and <laughs> plug into a baby. Well, a baby, it, it right. did remind me of the oh god, I can't remember from uh, from Metal Gear Solid Five. Started with a T, but anyway, the the parachute device that suctioned the guys mm-hmm. into the air. oh Fulton Fulton device. That sounds right. Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, it reminded me of like, you probably have, there's probably a number of little gadgets that uh, our pal Bridges has that are, let's say, uncommon to video games. Cause I see, it seems to be Kojima's, one of Kojima's fortes is sort of giving you the, giving these third person characters uh, like, like a, I don't know, a utility belt almost. Um, mm-hmm. he's, he's been, he's proven that he can do that, I think, in my opinion. So the latter is. Uh, not enough to sustain me. Well put, but I'm just hoping that that's not the only thing you have at your disposal. No, we saw a couple other things. There was like a climbing anchor. So basically, yeah. uh, which I guess is really just a repel uh, a like ladder a repel that down. goes takes you down. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just it's just a mechanic that's reverse the opposite ladder. of a ladder. Yeah, a reverse <laughs> ladder. Um, you mentioned the the baby or BB, which stands for bridge baby. So from what I've gathered is that this whole somehow there is a connection to what they call the other side. I think, or the upside. It's not the upside down, is it? That's from Stranger Things. That's Stranger Things. Yeah, come on. Um, yeah. But it's essentially the same idea. There seems to be another dimension or or some sort of other spectrum where dead people are, maybe, or yeah. victims mm-hmm. of terrible wars. Like there are some scenes where it flips over and you can see uh, some World War Two footage. There's, you know, it's 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 sadness. It's dark and you know it's definitely the other side and apparently these babies are the connection to it somehow it's very weird it's the whole plugging yeah. into the baby thing it looks like there's a way to maybe come back from that like people don't actually really fully die maybe in this world uh, as long as they have that bridge connection to come out of that dark place because we yeah. see I think Sam come out of that dark pool of tar or whatever that is um, and well he also has like a device where, he, where he can see these dead right. things coming through so that you can see them on like our side or on the, the yeah. quote-unquote normal side that has to do with the baby i guess uh plugging into the baby mm-hmm. you to kind of see the the baddies the bts <laughs> That's so weird yeah and it looked like the main bad guy sort of went over to the other side and looked like he was recruiting some some bad souls from that side or something like that yeah, yeah. so you mentioned the delivery aspect of the gameplay they mm-hmm. they only briefly showed some combat and right. you know, I don't know if that's to imply that that is not you know most of your playtime, or maybe that's um, I'm not sure what a good comparison for another game would be, but it's almost like that's like back that's like the backup plan <laughs> if your delivery goes wrong or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is one of those Sony narrative type games. That at least has a bit of that feel, like a Last of Us type thing, where there is some combat, but it's not your first choice. I didn't. Right. I wasn't terribly impressed with the combat I saw. I wasn't either. It, it seemed like the the enemies didn't really have the the smartest AI. I don't know. Because uh, they have those electric sticks that they're trying to chase Sam with. But then they don't actually, like, lunge at him with them. They try to swing them really awkwardly. And then they miss. <laughs> and so it's like, well, with these kind of bad guys, it's not that hard to get away. Like, you don't even really need to fight them. Just keep running. Um, and then he turns around and starts punching everybody in the around. face. Yeah, I want to see some more mechanics like more interesting mechanics of things you can do, not just for combat, but also exploration and the world itself. It, it seems like kind of a desolate wasteland. So I'm hoping to see something a little bit different. And I know we'll probably get that once you go to the other side. Uh, yeah. And there, there is definitely some hints towards uh, something bad has taken place because the, the trailer starts off with Sam talking to what appears to be the president of the United States, um, or at least what used to be the United States. Like there's a, there's a bit of, dialogue about how it's it's not what it used to be and it's not worth saving or it's not worth anything like you know mm-hmm. there's obviously this is not a normal everyday type of scenario something's gone on right yeah i feel like they're really building up uh this mysterious narrative and i hope it pays off in the end uh and isn't just kind of left as a confusing weird ending uh because could kojima i guess i don't know <laughs> um yeah, well, I don't know. Well, the exciting thing is we won't have to wait too long. Joel, you or you guys alluded to this earlier. It's coming out this uh, November. What is it, November 15th? 
can't remember. I don't remember the exact day, but yeah, definitely November. Um, November 8th. Were you guys surprised by that? I mean, sort of the narrative in the industry has been like, we won't see this thing for years and years. I'm like, glad that it's coming out. That yeah. It's not going to keep stringing people along, so to speak. Uh, I think it's good at some point to just put your game out. Like if you've already been revealed like a year prior, it's time to do a release date instead of letting the hype build and having it kind of die off over years and years of anticipation and then having the game come out to kind of a putter. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think this kind of will ride the hype into the fall and then the game will come out and people will be happy. So that's probably the best choice for them. It's probably been in development for quite a bit longer than we've been aware of it right. in yeah, public, which is, which is probably a good sign. Um, you know, this kind of leads into Cyberpunk 2077, which I would say is, is level with this game as far as hype is concerned. Um, and they don't, they don't have a real release date yet. In fact, the rumors are that it's, the rumor is it's definitely not coming out this year. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, it's, that's sort of the opposite of where you don't really know quite as much. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that it's this fall. I sort of thought that there would be more, but that's, that was based, uh, sorry, it would take longer, but that was based on what I'd seen prior to this trailer. When I saw this trailer, it was more obvious that they've got a lot done. You know, when so, we initially. So, when do you think? Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that when what I what we'd seen initially, like last year, about Death Stranding was very sparse, just tiny little bits that were weird, and then just kind of led to like, oh, I don't know if they even have a game yet, or if they just made some cool cutscenes with Norman Reedus. You know, um, seeing this eight minute trailer makes it more obvious that they've probably got a pretty pretty solid game ready. So, do you think we'll see more? Uh in the time leading up to the launch or will we just get a launch trailer and then that's it i wouldn't be surprised if we see one or two more small things especially with how sony has started doing their um sort of semi-regular little updates right. um state of plays i think they call them right so yeah. Yeah. i wouldn't be surprised if we see something else november is what five six months away so I don't know, maybe one more time. I'm not sure if we, we probably won't see anything at E3. Like, this is basically the E3 reveal equivalent for this, is my opinion, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, sure. it looks interesting. Am I going to... So here's the real question. I think we're probably all going to check it out. Yes? Yep. Yeah, for sure. It's it's one of those that you just can't not check out because mm -hmm. it's so, so hyped. People are so excited for it. And it's also full of intrigue. It's trying to... It's really trying to get you to dive into it. So I think we'll definitely check it out, but we'll see how it out is anybody going to order the collector's edition that comes with an actual bridge baby pod oh god <laughs> have you seen that too that. it I, looks creepy I, I, it looks just as that. creepy as it does in the trailer yeah does it float around well i don't know if it moves i hope not i think, I think it comes out you can take the baby out but i don't <laughs> oh, i don't know that god. it floats or maybe it's suspended with some little <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have some sort of game memorabilia in my room, but I don't know if I want that in my room. No. Oh, it wouldn't go in your room. It's supposed to be strapped to your chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's your connection to the other side, Jan. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to fall into the goo without it. I think That's ignorance one... is bliss. I don't want to know about the other side. <laughs> Speaking of ignorance, though, that is not one that you could easily explain to mom and dad. Right. You know, I don't know if you can easily explain that to other fellow gamers at this point. Like it's still, <laughs> that seems like a challenge. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, so speaking of E3, um, Sony's not going to be there. Microsoft is going to be there. Or they, I mean, they, they do their own big thing. So I feel like, you know, while some other publishers like Sony and others have decided to skip E3, I feel like Microsoft's doubled down on it, mm -hmm. which is probably a smart move to set themselves apart from that and they've basically said that you know we're gonna we're gonna show more stuff at e3 we're gonna have 14 first party games to show at e3 2019 which is awesome. apparently more first party games than they've ever shown um joe you play a lot of xbox or you have an xbox is, does this excite you that more more xbox stuff definitely i'm i'm a big microsoft at e3 proponent and i know that that's kind of sort of contrary to my my person because i think xbox is sort of like the dude bro of the industry but there's something like almost endearing about microsoft at e3 because i think that they actually love the company the folks that put on that show and they they love video games and uh, by contrast i feel like when i watch the playstation event it's a bunch of rich old men that put that together <laughs> so mm. uh so yes i'm excited for microsoft at e3 and the notion that they're gonna go big this year is even even better for me yeah microsoft's always done 
a pretty good job at E3 of showcasing stuff. Yeah. Um, and I really, I've really, I, I've, I haven't always paid a lot of attention to Xbox games. Uh, I've always had an Xbox, but it's never been my primary go-to gaming device. But I think ever since Microsoft decided to basically make all their first-party games, for the most part, uh, cross-platform and available on, on Windows, that to me is the most brilliant thing that they've done, because it really shows that where where some of their competitors have sort of siloed and withdrawn, looking at Sony, not allowing crossplay in particular, <clears throat> Microsoft's actually become more open and been like, you know what, yes, games, play them wherever you want to play them. And we talked a little bit about Microsoft and Nintendo working on some stuff in the future. Um, I feel like they've really embraced the actual part of gaming and being good for gamers, not necessarily just what's good for their financials. They have, and I'd say, just to be fair to the other companies, a la Sony, it's that it's easier to, to play that role that Microsoft's playing when they're in second place, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's easier to sort of, like, punch upward in that way, um, you know. And and Sony, who's sitting pretty with, like, major market share, just simply isn't motivated to do those sorts of things. So, like, I do understand there's, like, business reasons for that endearing thing that I mentioned, but nonetheless, yeah. it is endearing. And, and to be fair, Sony has some really good exclusives. Like, I can see why Sony might say, we're going to put out Last of Us 2, and it's going to remain a PS4 exclusive, because it sells hardware. Sure. Microsoft doesn't really have that. Like, yeah, they have they have Gears and a couple of other things, but I don't think many people are buying an Xbox. I, I guess Halo was probably their one big, you know, game that would sell hardware. Um, yeah. I think they were hoping for more with Sea of Thieves also. Um, even though that's good, it's a good game, but I don't know that it necessarily boosted their sales of Xboxes like they would hope. Right. Speaking of Sea of Thieves, Joe, we should play that because that's cross-play with PC, actually. <laughs> Man, you know I'm going to throw up. We talked about this. I oh, shit. Yes, we did. I can't handle it. <laughs> Dang it. We did have that Can you conversation. imagine that in VR? No. I would actually, I, I would love that. Mm. Um, but I don't get seasick in the game. And my theory was that it's because I'm always at the at the wheel, at the helm of the ship, which seems to be less up mm. and down. But <laughs> yeah, that would definitely make some people throw up. Sorry, man. Yeah, it's too bad. It's too bad. But yeah, so maybe, you know, Sea of Thieves was, I think it is a good game, but it probably didn't sell much hardware, especially, I, I guess this is the other downside, right? Is if when you release your games on PC simultaneously, then some people may not need to buy an Xbox, which I think, again, goes back to, you're a gamer, you prefer PC, cool. Play our game, though. You know, they're right. less about selling the, the hardware. And to Joe's point, it, yeah, I mean, the Xbox is far behind what Sony's doing. And I don't even know what Microsoft is doing for the future. Like We've talked about the PlayStation 5 and what it's bringing to the table in the future. Um, I got no idea what Microsoft's plans are. They have no VR offering. They have, you know, the Xbox One X was meh. So They did mention something about their cloud services. Um, so maybe we'll see them compete with Google Stadia on that. In the future, uh, if anybody, I think Microsoft would be the best contender for that. That's a good point. I think everybody is uh, working towards that. I just heard about Sony is working on its own cloud streaming solution as well, which uh, ironically will be powered by Microsoft Azure servers. But that's <laughs> that's more of a thing because when you go to looking for streaming solutions, like hardware wise and, and server farm wise, it's basically there's there's Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Those are the three that you're going to go to and. Right. So it doesn't make sense for Sony to go with Google because obviously Stadia is a direct competitor. And I think it actually just shows that Sony doesn't really consider Microsoft that big of a threat anymore. Um, val <laughs> probably valid. Um, but yeah, streaming is probably the the next big thing. And Microsoft, I think it is an opportunity for them to to sort of try to gain, make some gains again, because that is something that they should be good at. I mentioned before that I think Xbox Live is far superior to PlayStation Plus even though I don't pay for that, and I, for some reason, pay for PlayStation Plus. But again, it, it, it harkens back to the games, right? I wanted to play, uh, well, Red Dead Online is a bad example because that's on Xbox as well, but there were some games in the past that I wanted to play on PS4, so I had to get the Plus, and um, yeah. It's all about software. Microsoft should be good at that. All about it is. Software. So I wonder if we hear some more about that. They didn't really mention that, but I could see them talk about that some more because that does seem to be their next big play. They had that Xbox One discless, right? The one that doesn't have a, a right. DVD drive in it anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's another step towards all digital, but I think streaming will be the next big thing. <clears throat> yep. So um, alongside that, Microsoft's also bringing more games to Steam, which I find interesting because lately all the big news has been about developers taking game off Steam in favor of Epic Game Store. Um, again, 
Microsoft, I feel like they're doing, they're looking at what others are doing and what's unpopular and they're doing the exact opposite. And they're sort of playing a little bit of the, the white knight role where they're kind of like, all right, we see this happening, but you know, so here's some more Microsoft games. They're on the Microsoft Store, but we'll put them in Steam because honestly, the Microsoft Store is kind of a, a horrible experience. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, again, they get games where gamers want them. Sure. Good distribution here. Mm-hmm. I wonder how that will affect uh, cross play between Xbox. Like, can you still play your Steam games like back and forth from Xbox to Steam like you can with just Windows? Or is that's, there, a, like, a that's a DRM good thing? question. I would assume that it depends on how those Steam games launch. Um, For example, Ubisoft will have some Steam games that essentially just launch Uplay and then launch the game from there. So if Microsoft's games are essentially still going to use the Xbox backend, which they probably will, then it should be fine. Um, But then you may not be able to use your Steam friends list. So yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. Crossplay is important, I think. Um, More and more of that. Like I want to be able to play with people uh, no matter what device they play on. And the more we get new consoles, and it seems to be a little bit of a splinter effect happening, where you've you know you've got the Xbox One S, the Xbox One X, you've got the PlayStation Four, PlayStation Four Pro, soon the PlayStation Five, which will be backwards compatible, but will it be you know forwards compatible? Like, is somebody who's just got a PS Four still going to be able to do stuff? Um, wow, so, this uh, is the next frontier, Jan. This is this is where the I just had this epiphany. This is where the games industry needs to go because. We need an open source, almost Discord esque platform for uh, game developers to hook into, so that there is indefinite cross platform play for their game and for the for that game in perpetuity. So, like, hmm. this has to be possible to do, right? Just some sort of like everyone agrees this is the best way. It's popular with gamers, and therefore Sony and Microsoft are forced to get into this thing. That that's where that's where we need to go. Stake in the ground. Yeah, and, and I think that's why I think that's probably fairly challenging from a technical perspective, which of is course. why this whole streaming thing is such a big deal. Um, and that's why I think everybody, including Google, want to be the streaming service because if you play this out a couple of years down the road, you should be able to play a game with your controller that talks to your TV. Maybe you have a little dongle. Maybe it's built into your smart TV, right? And you can just play that game. No matter what device, like it doesn't matter if you have an Xbox, you don't even need that. You just need a TV or the small app in it. Um, and at that point, it, it doesn't matter anymore what the hardware is. Now, for somebody like me who who pours money into my PC, you know, I still want to get some value out of the 2080 Ti that I spent an obscene amount of money on. So I think there'll always be some of that. But yeah, I think more and more it's going to go in that direction where you're just going to, you know, you just fire up the game. Maybe you're on a vacation and you're in a hotel room and you just, you know, you launch the smart app on the TV, you hook up your controller to it and you're ready to go. Yeah, that's where I think the cloud streaming is definitely going to come into play. But even then, I don't know if we're going to have cross cloud play, you know, <laughs> like will will Microsoft's <laughs> streaming that. service work with Google Stadia? Probably not. So, why we so that's that why platform. it seems like a race, like who gets there first, who's the biggest? Because we all know what happens to the ones that don't make it, right? They just mm-hmm. kind of disappear and nobody cares about that anymore. Um, but yeah, for a long time, I've, uh, I'm not a big, I don't really care too much about like even this disruption with the Epic Game Store and people have a lot of issues with it. But when it comes to playing with your friends, even just having them on different systems and friend lists and stuff does get to be a problem. And we do kind of use Discord for us anyways, as a bit of a unifier, because we go in here and at least we can all talk and we don't need to talk on an in-game app, no matter what store it's in. So that, that works for PC games. Works a little bit on consoles. Joe, we tried that the other week with Dauntless. And, it, yeah. you know, you, you joined Discord on your phone, but you essentially had no game sound unless you're putting on two headsets. So it's it's awkward still. Mm-hmm. We'll get there in time. Yep. Now, you have cross-play. Call yes. of Duty is going to have cross-play. Like it, it is. Now, sort of. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Console to PC. Xbox to PC, not PS4 to Xbox. Ugh. Right, but PS4 to PC, right? I assume. Y- yes, I think the only one out of the triangle that has been cut is the Xbox to PS4. Yeah, and, and that's that has not out to of the be, ordinary. But that has to be a that can't be a technical limitation because the argument's always been like the argument against crossplay has always been oh PC gamers the control scheme is just going to dominate people on a gamepad on a console that's mm-hmm. been proven wrong for the most part. Um, but yeah, this seems to be just another Sony Microsoft not playing along nicely on that. Right, silly. Very silly. Um, 
Are you guys interested in this Call of Duty? I watched this trailer and I was like, yeah, it looks nice, but I'm not sure if I... Uh, I've never been a big Call of Duty fan to begin with, but this one I kind of looked at me like, I don't know if I want to play a game where the realities of war are ripped right from the headlines. Like, I'm not sure if I want to do that. Yeah, definitely. I definitely can tell you that I do not. Yikes. Right. Um, I'm kind of, again, lukewarm on <laughs> another lukewarm on a uh, game that I'm on. But I was really into Call of Duty back in the day, oddly enough. That was like my game of choice. Uh, was it the multiplayer and, stuff, though, I assume? Yes, for the most part. I did play some single player. Um, but yeah, it's mostly multiplayer. Like, I think most people are on that level. Uh, the fact that they're calling it Modern Warfare, at first I rolled my eyes. I'm like, really? <laughs> uh, but it kind of makes sense when you think about them trying to sort of reinvent the, the franchise. It's been long enough that people who grew up with the first, like COD 4, aren't the same people that they're trying to market to now. Like they probably want to attract a younger audience who never played the Modern Warfare series. And so this one will be sort of for those those players. Um, so I, I, I'm interested to see what they do with like Captain Price and all the different iconic characters in the mm -hmm. Modern Warfare. Because it is a reimagining and yeah, they are bringing those right. characters back. Mm -hmm. So um, it's funny because I played most of my Call of Duty games for the single player. Like, because for the most part, they had what I would call summer action movie type stories. They were by mm -hmm. no means well written or super intriguing, but they were like the, you know, they were like the, the Die Hard movie, the, the Rambo movie, the big action summer event, even though it always comes out in the fall, but you get my meaning, I think. And right. so it was entertaining enough. Um, I think I'm just getting old that I look at this and be like, I, I don't know. However, I am intrigued by this co-op thing that they're tossing into that where the single player campaign, I think, will actually lead into some co-op missions. And I'm always, I'm all about the co-op games these days. I don't do player versus player unless I can, I really can't help it, but co-op's kind of my jam. So maybe? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they incorporate that into the campaign missions. Yeah. I feel like they're they're making this attempt again where you play where they don't want to have like it, a good versus bad guys thing where they they let you play from both sides. But I've read a bunch of stuff about this already, and it doesn't seem like they get that quite right. Um, I don't know. It's it's tough to make a modern day conflict game when there's so much conflict in the in the current time. You know, like mm -hmm. it's it's difficult. I feel like it's a lot easier to make a future warfare game or something like. Um, you know, like a Fortnite where it's completely fictional or even Apex Legends where it's, you know, it's 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 a whole different thing. Like, it's difficult to do anything realistic. And it's weird that Infinity Ward kind of doubled down on the realism thing, I think. So I'm not sure if that's going to be yeah. a, a hit or not. I'm sure that Call of Duty fans will be all over this because they are every year. And it's coming out on October 25th again. So there goes your late October, early November. <clears throat> I think... I don't know. I feel like the ripping it out of the headlines thing is not too far from what they try to do anyway. They try to be kind of edgy, or at least they used to be. Uh, I haven't really kept up with the Call of Duty games recently as much. Um, but, you know, they had like the No Russian mission and they had a lot of like edgier stuff back then. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do for this one. What what I find interesting is that they with the co-op, I wonder if they're going to have one of the players like die part way through and then you end up playing as somebody else because they they did that a lot in the old campaigns where you'll be playing as somebody and then they get killed and then mm -hmm. you just have to pick up the story as a new person and that was actually um, kind of interesting they let you play from a not you know from different angles from different right. uh like one time you'd be uh, an american soldier then you'd be a british soldier battlefield's done that in a couple of its games as well um to reasonably good effect so we'll see i mean it looks pretty it looks good graphically like their trailers always look good we'll see how mm -hmm. it plays out in in practice um I, is it correct that they're using a new engine is that did i hear that properly <laughs> i don't know i don't know where i saw that but somebody said like oh it's a new mm -hmm. engine that's a good question i'm not sure though so don't i don't even know what engine they've used in the past i don't know either but if it's if it's a new one that should be interesting for the mechanic like the, the feel of the game because part of what made call of duty so good was just how how crisp i think the controls are um, it, it is apparently week. oh that's a youtube video nope i want to watch that um apparently it is a new engine hmm. um, yeah yeah for me call of duty was all about the feel of like being able to turn on a dime and shoot things really quickly it's that fast switch uh sort of thing and, and you get in sort of a rhythm with those kind of games and so i wonder if it'll feel 
different or if it's going to still retain its Oh, it will have RTX support, won't it? I think uh, we did I, I think so. I did read that. They're going to have god rays, so sources of light. Right. Um so it's, I feel like most of these new engines these days it's all about lighting, right? Realistic lighting. Mm-hmm. It's like the one thing that is still challenging for these engines to recreate from a technical standpoint. So, yeah, I guess it is going to be a new engine, which is probably a good thing because the Call of Duty engine has probably been around for a while. It has. The yeah. IW engine. So, yeah, I guess we'll oh, is see. is that what it's called? That's what the original one was called. I don't know what this oh, new wow. one is called. Um, I think it's just the Infinity Ward engine, I'm assuming. It was developed by Infinity Ward, so I'm assuming that's what the IW stands for. It must be. Uh, did either of you guys ever play any of the Baldur's Gate series? I did Ooh. not. I was uh, I was big into Divinity last year with a friend co-op. Uh-huh. So, uh, uh, original Divinity's good. Sin 2? Yes. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Not, not, I'm sorry, I actually not want two, to go back to that. I got sucked into some Dungeons & Dragons over this past week. Um, I've never played, but uh, I started watching this show called The Dungeon Run. That's essentially uh, uh, it, it's a YouTube show, but it's recorded of you know five people plus a dungeon master playing D anD D, and I can't stop watching it. It's um, <laughs> nice. it's fascinating to me. So I actually I'm I'm exploring Dungeons and Dragons for the first time in my life and see what I can get into. And obviously, Divinity Original Sin was based on that as some of those other ones are in Baldur's Gate as well. So the, the developers, Larian Studios, that have made original Sin Divinity 1 and 2, um, they've teased a new logo that has the number 3 in it, but so that either could be original Sin 3, which seems like the, the easy, straightforward guess, but there's some rumors that it could actually point towards Baldur's Gate 3, which could be exciting for a lot of people, because that uh, game's been around. Yeah, what are those rumors based on? Just Just hype? Or is there any sort of like information pointing toward that? Apparently, there is there are some references to Baldur's Gate three to the logo file itself um, uh, in the in the metadata somewhere. So wow. they literally dug up some XML file that referred to the logo as Baldur's Gate logo three retouched. What does the original Baldur's Gate logo look like? It was like a skull or something, right? Jeez, it's been forever. Um, I'm curious if the new one is hearkening back at all to the original. It doesn't really look not like a really. Skull. No, the one, like no. the original logo was. Had nothing to do with the numbers, really. And I mean, this logo is That's literally cool, just, though. you know, three. It's the the Roman numeral it like, three. It looks like the Wild Hunt uh, from from Witcher, like the three. Yeah. Cuts. I mean, you, you could tell me that this is any any sort of D and D related game logo, and I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. That could be original sin three. It could be any any of those types of games. It looks right? like Diablo to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it could yes, be anything. yeah, <laughs> I mean, it could be anything, but. Um, I actually want to go back to Divinity Original Sin 2. I never finished that. Um, it's such a good game. I've always loved how they did co-op. Like, the split screen was really well done, I thought. Uh, like, if you play on console. Definitely. And see, this is my problem. I, I want to do that co-op. I don't... Joe, you know Bill. Bill's never going to play this. No. Um, turn-based <laughs> isn't Bill's jam. I, I need... I just like Bill wants to play a greater variety of games, I need a greater variety of gaming pals to <laughs> play different games with. Down with Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here. This is the only <laughs> opportunity we get to talk crap about him. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, let's see. If you, if the, maybe you know, in this new era of cross-platform play, whatever this game is, Baldur's Gate, Divinity, whatever, I'm hmm. I'm there with you if you're into it. Cool. We will try to make that happen. Um, yeah, and we should be hearing more about this at E3. Hopefully, seems yeah. to be the rumor as well. Because mm-hmm. when was that teased? Just recently. Uh, yeah, two days ago. Like past week, yep. a couple days ago. Yeah, definitely going to be something in E3. So that should be exciting. Cool. Um, and that is, uh, for me, still the one thing that I look forward to the most. It's not so much seeing new information about games I already know are coming. Uh, it's the games that I had no idea were, were going to be coming that always mm-hmm. excite me the most. And there's always one or two that pop up out of nowhere where it's like, by the way, we're making, you know, game XYZ. And it's like, oh, that's awesome. I had no idea. Love, uh, love that E3 feeling. Ride it. Yes. And speaking of E3, so as we said, you know, we have one more episode to record before it starts. Um, I stumbled across, uh, every, I think everybody's familiar with bingo. And lots of people do, they'll do E3 bingo, where they basically take a sheet of lots of squares and you fill in each square with a prediction. And if that happens to come true, you check it off. And if you create a straight line or diagonal line, whatever, you've got a bingo. Google it if you don't know what bingo is. Um, (laughs) But we're going to do some E3 bingo cards. 
So we're all going to fill out a card over the next week, and we will talk about it in the next episode. This will be our official E3 predictions, and we'll see which one of us can get a bingo, if any. <laughs> see how, how right we are, how wrong we are, and you know, we'll try to not just make them really obvious predictions, like, you know, Larry and Studios teasing maybe original Sin 3 or Baldur's, you know, it'd be something that's not... Well, you gotta put, you, you gotta really, like, commit, right? You gotta say, it's Baldur's Gate, whatever. Yes, exactly. Commit. Yeah. It can't be vague. It has to be a statement. Yeah. Yep. Like saying, you know, Microsoft announces, I don't know, something something very specific. Sims 5, that was something Bill talked about the other day, right? So I would I would expect Bill to put down somewhere, EA announces The Sims 5. That's a statement that's very easily a yes or no answer, right? Yes. Like this happened or didn't happen. Do you have any that you know you're going to put on yours? I don't yet. I need to spend a little bit more time. This sheet is quite large. There's going to be quite a few predictions. Um, they can also be statements in the negative where you can say, like, you know, um, I, I predict that uh, Microsoft is not going to talk at all about any new Xbox hardware, mm, that kind of yep. thing. Yeah. And just an analog question and answer, or a rather binary. So just black yeah. or white. A, yes, a black and white yes or no type of type of answer to that statement. So uh, basically what I'm getting at is we, we've got, I found these E3 bingo cards uh, I found them on Reddit. I will credit whoever actually created them. Uh, I will tweet them out from our at Push to Talk FM account in this n- upcoming week. So look for them today or tomorrow. Whenever you're listening to this, check our Twitter. Uh, and we want you to participate. Download the image, fill in some predictions, send them back to us on Twitter, and we will all compare notes after E3. We'll share our cards in the next episode, and then afterwards we'll see how how well we did. And... Um, Laren, hopefully you'll you'll fill one out as well. And I really want to thank sure. you for stepping in when Bill was near death or dying or doing whatever he's doing right now. Probably to hopefully taking it easy. Um, Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Where can where can people find you online? You mentioned a YouTube channel earlier. Um, this is your chance to throw out some links if you want people to find you. All right. Um, so yeah, YouTube. It's uh, youtubecom slash strangelove 23 and on Twitter. It's X, Strange Love X, because somebody took Strange Love. Uh, and th- those are pretty much the main sources you can find me. I guess you can find me on Instagram, but I usually just post pictures of plants and cats. So <laughs> uh, you can find me there at Strange Love Official. Uh, the love is spelled L-U-V, for anybody wondering. Um, but yeah, if and you're you interested s- in games or cats or plants. And I you said you were, you were writing. You still write somewhere these days? Uh, I have a guide stash. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I'm also <laughs> trying to... I'm trying to get my own little indie game blog up and running. Oh, awesome. So working on that as well. Um, that's that's basically it, aside from doing all the content creation over on YouTube. At the sounds moment. sounds great. Well, next time we have you on, we'll have to you'll have to give us an update on your indie blog, see how that's progressing, because that sounds like a great idea. Definitely will. All right. Well, and Joe, hopefully you've had a. I'm sure you've had a busy week. Do you get any time off now at all, or is it straight back to work tomorrow? Back to work, buddy. No rest for the wicked, hey. Eh? <laughs> that's me alright well we will be back next week hopefully everybody's enjoying their summer and thank you very much for listening <laughs>